three, two, one. Welcome to the Jamie Foster Brown Show. And today we have the beautiful <laughs> and talented, woohoo, legendary Miss AJ Johnson with us. And she is an American actress, TV producer, choreographer. Oh, what else? Let's see. A fitness trainer, life coach, everybody's best friend because she will take care of you. I have never heard anything negative said about this woman in life. I am so honored to have her here with me today. I've missed you. It's been years since we've been together, right? Yeah, years. And and I gotta tell you, I'm getting choked up actually hearing you introduce me because what I need you to know and everyone else to know, Jamie, you're, I mean, I say it and we giggle, but you taught me everything I know. Like what you're, what you're seeing manifest. Oh yeah, you can frown your brow if you want. I, yeah. No, I don't know. I'm, sh I'm shocked you said that. I, really, I oh, am. Listen, let me, let me give some detail. I don't know what I did to, to earn or for you to see me worthy of your expertise and your wisdom as a journalist, as a strong black woman in the industry. But you were telling me 20 years ago like, get ready, decide what that is for you, stay ready, um, follow your heart and your soul, no matter what that means. Um, you know, I was telling my publicist, when she called me, I said, you know, Jamie was one of the first people to support, not just as a journalist in the industry, but as a woman, mm -hmm. to support me when I said, you know, Jamie, I just think there's more for me. And who can I talk to about that? I'm an actress, I'm doing great, I'm working, I'm doing projects I love, but God is telling me there's something more. Not necessarily instead of, but just different. And you were like, go find out what it is. I support you, go, and here we are. Like, I mean, I'm just telling you, 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 you taught me no one can design the vision for your life but you. Nobody can go after it but you. So don't, don't look for the validation, look for the peace, look for the joy. Your voice is in my head all the time, even when I don't even see you. But you know, um, I appreciate that, but it's so easy with you because of your spirit. I remember when we were at one of those, I think it was Essence, um, one of the, the luncheon, one of the big ones, like Oprah and all of them were there. No matter who was being celebrated at that time, you always were a light. You were always positive, even if you were, just in, in your career sometimes you know we're overlooked mm -hmm. it never it never faced you you never had a sour note to say nothing you were always the positive you and i remember when oprah got interested in you you told me i think at that remember that what was that about y'all you told me at that luncheon yes that oprah, she made, oprah, I, tell me about that yeah mm -hmm. oprah oprah signed me to what turned out to be a two-year deal at all to develop, you know, content um, to basically be mentored by her as a life coach and as 
a spiritual being to reach the masses. And it was amazing. You know, I think, unfortunately, you know, OWN is a small network. And what I do and what Anyanla Benzant, who is also my big sister in, in life, what we do is so similar. There wasn't enough space on a small network for two, two very similar degrees of content. But Oprah kept me busy. I mean, I've done an appearance or two or three on most of the shows on OWN. I did Dion's Family Playbook with, um, with uh, Tracy Edmonds and, and Dion Sanders. I did uh, the Book of John Gray for two seasons with Pastor John Gray and Avenger Gray. I actually moved to Houston and moved in with them to actually life coach them through their life. So I did a lot on OWN and still do. I was on Oprah.com doing a whole lot of content. So, you know, I heard you say um, overlooked or not recognized. And one of the things that I personally believe is there's not really, there's no such thing. You know, what's yours is yours. And, you know, I know that I have a lot of passions and a lot of different directions that I'm supposed to be using my purpose. And acting's just one of them. Mm -hmm. I've never been the kind of spirit that chased the trophy or chased the awards because my ultimate award is impressing the God that I serve. So as long as I know that I'm touching people and changing lives, whether it's with an acting role I take or a motivational speaking engagement or somebody hearing this interview with you, you know, as long as I'm changing one life, as long as I'm helping somebody live their dream, then to me, that's the biggest reward for you me. Know, AJ, but <clears throat> you know, I'm around a lot of people. <laughs> okay. Yes, you are, Jamie. I'm around a lot of people and during that time, but with you, there was always this feeling of oh, when I was with you. Oh, really? I have to say that. Yeah. I love to hear that. That was always the acceptance. So, you know, because during that time, AJ, you know, I was different than any other magazine. And people criticized and said, she's a gossip columnist. I hated that because I never gossiped. I, I, I wrote it like, this is what Jamie said, and this is what they said. I never, and it was like some people, even in that room, uh, were, you know, they were like off putting with me. And I never let people know that, but I, there was a lot of arrogance, especially with the people who were involved with that, you know, okay. So I've had to deal with that where I was always misunderstood, but not by you. You understand? Yeah, so, that's a, that's a if, if I can say to you, that's what I call it a spirit to spirit connection. Mm -hmm. Our connection and anyone you come across that you have that experience with, I'm sure it's not just me, but but I value you as you as you value me. I believe that our connection has always been deeper, bigger, for more than just this industry. Right. right. Even though you work in it and I work in it, we've always said that there's more for us to do. We don't necessarily know the hour or 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 the location. But our connection has always been solid and strong and joyful when we see each other, whether it's brief or long term. And let me say this, you know, you are a, as I am, I'm speaking from ex experience, you are a truth seeker and a truth teller. And there's very few people in the industry that are comfortable living their truth. Yes. And so when you come around, when I come around, Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a mirror that some people don't want to look at. They don't want to look at that. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you're feeling. Right. But for me, once I understood what that not so positive energy was when I come around or that put offness that you talk about, once I understood what it was, I made sure that it didn't affect my energy mm -hmm. and I continued to walk in my truth. Well, you you know, when, when people like you and I are given whatever this is that God gives us to want to want things to be better. We don't live in ne the negative world. We live in a world where everything has to be, can we make it okay? You know, ma no matter what, can we make it okay? And it's not a choice. It's not our choice. Like you said, that's who and we it, are. Right. That's who we are. Well, people remember you most from your roles in House Party and Baby Boy. Why haven't we seen more acting from you? Because you, you are a phenomenal actress now. Come on, honey. You well, know? I love you. 
what you what have you been doing? You know, I know you got um, don't run from the shift. What's that? That's a that's your wellness platform, right? Well, let me let me let me say this. Okay, the don't run from the shift is actually. I don't even know if it's necessarily my wellness platform. I think it's become the platform that I've titled due to the state of the world and where we are right now. Um, I'll go back and answer your first question. Okay. Uh, when I when I decided that I wanted more than to be a hired actress, I knew I wanted to produce. I knew I wanted to create new and different content. And I didn't want to wait for people to ask me to do it. So my strategy, and I'm not going to take all the credit, my dad, rest his soul, in 2002, right after Baby Boy, he uh -huh. said, I want you to develop and own something. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, Baby Boy was great, you were amazing. But if your last name's not Sony, you don't own shit. You don't own it, right. No. At all. Mm -hmm. So he was like, you're, you're a hired employee. I need you to develop something that you own. And my passion has always been healthy living and fitness. I had no idea at the time that as I unleashed that passion and purpose, it would become and grow into the brand it is now. And when I decided that my particular voice and stance as an actress was missing from the industry, that I would go back and step in front of the camera, it was years after I developed the brand. So I knew I'm renewed, I'm different, my perspective's different, what I wanna bring to the camera's different, what I wanna bring to set, around my cast and crew is different. And so now I am forward as an actress. I don't like to say back. I'm forward as an actress, you know, creating something new and different. And I'm so excited because the, the biggest difference is now I'm doing it from not doing it as a career choice. I'm not doing it to increase my celebrity. I'm not doing it to pay my bills. I've got a brand and a business called the AJ Zone that's yeah. global and doing that incredibly. Now I'm acting for fun. So I get to pick and choose my producers, my directors, uh, my scripts, my characters for, for the sheer fun of it. And when I tell you, Jamie, it is the best God yes I've ever received. I had a strategy, I put it into action. And when God said, yes, here I am. So I have a, I have a, um, uh, uh, a series called Stuck With You on UMC. We're going into our second season, our first season streamed last year. I just finished a holiday movie called Holiday Heartbreak that will be out in Christmas time. Um, I've got two other projects coming in November and December that I'm going to film. Can't really talk about those yet. Okay. And some things I'm working with, some development stuff with the network for spring 2021. And this is all during a pandemic. <laughs> I, like, I mean, so when you say what's been going on with you, I created a, I created a business. I own it, like, you know, the AJ zone. Guess who's AJ? Wow, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm in love with my people, which you know that, right? No, no backstabbing or anything. It's just, I'm just in love. This, this is what God gave you and me. That is the biggest gift that anyone can get that we can accept others who are growing and successful. And we said, look at God. You yes. have to say, look at God, because God is the one who makes it all happen. Yes. And I'm so excited about you. And when I, when I heard, I said, oh my gosh, she's doing so much. This is wonderful. And spending most of 2019 in Ghana, Africa. Now, that's what I want to talk to you. You were in Accra? I you was in Accra. In I was in uh, Kamasi. I actually spent some time in Cote d'Ivoire. Um, I, I just decided that I wanted to explore the continent. And I had never been to Africa before 2019. And when I went for New Year's and the turn into 2019, I got rebaptized in the waters of Ghana. And the ancestral energy that washed over me completely shifted me soul deep. And that's where Don't Run From The Shift came from. Because I was determined okay. to not come back to America. Well, it's interesting you say that because I'm kind of determined to leave America. Because I went to, I've been, I've been asked to go come to Ghana several times. And that, that, the one time I was in Ghana, I never had so many men. I had five guys come, one, one every night sort of coming, taking me out. You know, I've, I've been asked to come back again. I've been asked to come to the Congo. And um, where is it? Somewhat, um, one other place, I can't even think. Um, Angola, was it? Maybe. I, I, I know that when there was something there, 
in Africa that calls you to stay there. They want you to stay there, you know? And I keep thinking about, I need to go back. I really need to be there. The, 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 shift, the, the, the shift that I'm talking about is exactly that. The shift of learning our true culture and history in a way that I've never been taught through books, obviously, but, but then to learn it through experience, to touch the soil, to hear the stories, to learn the dialects, um, to be renamed. You know, I was renamed by one of the most celebrated queen mothers in um, Akumu, Ghana, which is right outside of Accra. And I use that name. I was born on a Wednesday. So my, my name in Ghana is Akuya. So I'm AJ Akuya Johnson. My full African name is Akuya Ochrobia. And you'll see that on screen in my acting work. Um, I just, I got shifted understanding who I really am as an African woman, um, the royalty that all of us really were before we were kidnapped and brought over to America to work enslaved 400 years ago. And so- Did you go there? Did you go to? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Like, when like- you, I can, you, you can feel your, your ancestors there. I actually, you know, the water was higher. It, the water was higher when they were taking us through this area. We had to go through this portal to get on the ship for them to take us to America. The door of no return. Oh my God. The door of no you return. Can feel your, you can feel it. You can feel the pain, the sorrow. The, uh, I, you know, I gotta tell you, I don't even really talk about it much because I feel like I can't even begin to do the experience justice. All I say is, instead of buying that Hermes bag, instead of buying the red bottoms, Thank instead you. of you know going on that extra vacation, take that money and go spend a week in Africa and, and do yourself a favor and just experience our true culture and, and the, the, the soil, literally the soil and the spiritual soil of where we come from. And I just promised myself I wasn't gonna come back to America unchanged. And I had no idea in January, 2019, that I would start working with the Board of Tourism and the President's Office and the, um, the uh, United States Embassy in Ghana. And I went back 10 times last year alone. You did? Are you serious? Last year alone. Next time you're going, because I, I will be right here with you. I'm, I'm, I'm planning now, so we'll talk about it. I was literally on my way to do a project in March when the, um, when the uh, quarantine hit. And so, of course, Africa closed their borders, Ghana did, and I got stuck here in LA. And I say that on purpose, I got stuck because I was trying to get stuck over in Ghana and they wouldn't let me in. Well, let me just tell you this. My girlfriend is amazing and what she did, she used to work for Coca-Cola. So what she did, she, she, she does a lot in Accra. So what she did was she uh, had some Coca-Cola like uh, stands made for maybe, eight to 10, maybe 20 women, and gave them a case of Coca-Cola to sell along, you know, along, along the road. Oh, yeah, the roads. That was years ago. These women are still in business today. Okay, it was years ago. She also bought sewing machines. I think it was like 80 sewing machines. And because they don't have Kotex there, they make Kotex and now she's put those women in business. And she wants to, that's where she, her mindset is to go to Ghana, to do what we can do as Americans. We can bring so much to them, you know? And, and one of the things that I'm finding that really is interesting to me this year later, after mm -hmm. so much of my travels last year, is that now America is in a state of, um, this, with the systemic racism, police brutality, our, our government, our position with government, we're now in a position where we have to understand we're not as separate mm -hmm. as we have historically thought we were from our African brothers and sisters in the continent. And, 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 and them there are learning that we're not that separate and that we're interested in learning our similarities. That's one of the things I created an organization called The Bridge to Better. And it got put on hold because obviously we can't go back and forth during the pandemic travel wise. But one of my incentives is to do projects where we bridge African Americans with our African brothers and sisters so that we can say we're not that separate. It's just been too long since we've actually connected. But once we connect, it's, a, it's game over. <laughs> it's game over. Once we connect, it's game over.
You know, our resources are coming from Africa. Let me ask you this about nutritionally. What has that taught you by being over in Africa? Did you get a new insight or a new? It, it taught me, it taught me that my nutritional and better health journey here was building me to better understand my DNA origin once I got there. Once you got there, okay. The, the, um, the neem leaves and trees. I was drinking neem tea before as an herb and didn't even know the true healing benefits and that it was actually from Africa. I had no what idea. What is it from? Neem? Uh, neem. N-E-E-M. And it's actually the, 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 the leaf that they're using. Oh, that hair. Yes, neem. It's the leaf that they're using now for most of the COVID patients in Africa because it's so healing. Are you serious? And I've been drinking neem tea forever. It's the nastiest tea you're gonna ever drink. <laughs> nasty, nasty, nasty. But can I tell you, it'll cure anything like that. How can we get neem tea here? Is it in the health food store? In a minute, it's gonna be at the AJZone.com. Trust okay, me. AJZone.com, okay. <laughs> um, but you know, I, I got some and I have friends that send it to me from Ghana because now, of course, I know. Um, you know, it's just, it, I got confirmed. Let me just say that. My, my healthy living routine, my fitness routine, I was hiking over there. And it's one thing to hike in the mountains. I love California, it's beautiful. I hike in Arizona. I try to hike as part of my, um, my get to know the arena of wherever I am. But girl, Jamie, going on a hike in the, the mountains and the terrain that our ancestors hiked. Oh my God. I mean, I take off my shoes and my boots and just hike barefoot just to be able to connect mm -hmm. to the soil. Mm -hmm. I'm crying half the time. I'm reconnecting. Um, I sleep like I've never slept. The peace I sleep with there. Um, just the ease of my life. I notice when I'm in America, I feel completely yes, off yes. balance and yes. just rushed. Right. You know? Um, and when I'm, when I'm in Africa, I don't feel that rush. I feel a peace and a calm in my overall being. I just, you know, so that's what I mean when I say don't run from the shift. It's once you start to feel that shift, run to it, not from it. So AJ, you were planning on going back and just putting your estate down and get a place to stay there or? I've, I've, already, I've already done that actually. You've already I, done I, that. Yeah, but I'm back and forth. I feel like my divine assignment is to be back and forth. You know, okay. I'm still, I'm, I'm doing some great business here. Um, obviously I'm going to be doing more projects as an actress here, but, but God is constantly showing me what the connection is. I did a movie for TV one called sins of the father, July. Um, it aired on TV one, July, 2019. And by August, 2019, we had a red carpet premiere in Accra, Ghana, because normally Africa doesn't get our product right, right. in a year. And love Michelle Rice for that, you know, girlfriend and um, and president of TV One. She approved for me to take Sins of the Father to Ghana. We had a red carpet premiere, a Q and A that turned into a master class, and then oh, a master class in Ghana, and then one show that TV One also has called uh, Lens of Culture. It's a travel show for Clio TV. We shot three episodes in Ghana, and I produced the episodes. So again, it's like. God just keeps doing this to me whenever I go to Africa. What are you thinking about our climate, our political climate today? What's going to happen to us? How are you? How are you feeling about it? Are you positive? Are you mm, don't know? I'm, I'm positive in terms of believing in the fact that we can create and acquire the change we're after, primarily because of my travels to Africa. I now understand better than I did before. I understand our strength. I understand our resilience. I understand um, how multifaceted and talented we are. And I understand the threat that we are as a people mm -hmm. to non-Africans, non, to our non-brown and black brothers, right? right? right. So what, 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 what unnerves me is that too many of us don't understand it. So we operate in fear. I feel like we operate in doubt. Like for example, when, when our sister Kamala Harris was announced as Joe Biden's running mate, the first thing we wanna do is go back into, well, I don't like what she did. I don't like her history. I didn't like her as a DA. And I'm like, okay, but, and I saw somebody post this. I meant to repost on Instagram. Somebody said, well, I'm still dealing with you despite your past. 
Mm. Oh, oh, why can't we deal with her despite oh, her? Yes, right, right. But, you know, it's like we, we, have, we right. We have to I mean, live and move on and understand and, the circumstances under which something happened before. Is that and, the, yeah. And, now is a chance for us to have a sister that went to an HBCU, a mm -hmm. sister that pledged an African American sorority, a sister that came up through the ranks of Ivy League. You know, all of that right there tells me that's a different mentality, mm -hmm. it's a different spirit that can bring a different energy to help heal our country. Now, is it going to take time? Absolutely. But I'd rather have somebody like her in the in the ranks trying than no one. And look at where we are now. Oh my God, I'm so fearful. I feel, you know, my husband's best friend was um, a historian and he studied the Third Reich. He, he studied not Hitler's, you know, Nazis. And there's so many things that are familiar. They too, used to, many. too many things familiar. And I, I just want people to understand that there's someone that doesn't care about anybody else except their own and their own people. You know, I, I, I'm starting to say we live in a generation among among a, a generational space where we don't have the experience of going to a water fountain and it says whites only and we can't mm -hmm. drink. We don't have the, the true experience of that level of segregation. We don't have the experience of you can't eat here because you're black. Right. So it's a little bit delayed in terms of the, the reality that's smacking us in the face. Racism mm -hmm. still exists. It's showing up differently. It's but like, I feel oh, yeah. like, you know, I just feel like, again, since my travels to Africa, I feel like I understand we were never brought here for equality in the first place. We were brought oh. here as a, to work. Right, so, right, right. So to keep expecting them to turn over into this, you went from my slave to my equal, I'm no. not waiting. That. That's not gonna happen. I justice. I want justice. When something right. goes wrong, there needs to be a justice system in place. But in terms of the other thing, that's where I like to go and be productive in Africa. Yeah, yeah. The racism has been unleashed. Yes. And you know, it, it's it's no other way around it. And I, my husband's uh, a best friend was uh, um, he was an expert on Nazi German, and I used to hear about how things happen and progress and how mentally people accepted what was going on and i see the same thing happening here and it's very it's very it's very frightening for me you know so i just want us to be mindful of that you know we do have uh while we do have the power of the vote right now we need to exercise it okay and that's and and that's the biggest thing you know i what i found out that uh, too large of a percentage of the nba wasn't even registered to vote what 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 what, what, what? Serves me again that I'm gonna even start speaking louder about and and I'm glad we're talking about this because I promised myself um, I just I just returned to LA from shooting the film and I like to sometimes take a week to just decompress shift my energy from being on set to you know my life coaching work and 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 I ask myself all the time you know what what's my assignment for this week or for this day and I feel like you're gonna see a lot more from me from the standpoint of we have to exercise our power. And one of our powers is the right to vote. Yes. You know, yes. we can't we can't operate in fear and say, well, what is she gonna do to change things? Let's 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 get some change first right. by voting. And right. then we can put our we can put our foot down and tell her what we need. But yes. when there's no one in office looking out for us, we don't have we don't stand a chance. Right. I'm 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 very uh, I'm I I'm hopeful that we will see what's in front of us. Because a lot of times we don't pay attention, you know, and to do the right thing and what how we how we vote and how we take care of one another. I want us to I want us to, to learn how to you embrace other people. You we don't want to just shut other people down just because well, she said this back in 1977. So I don't want to talk to her anymore. We have to learn how to forgive. We have to understand that we do grow, we do change, and we can help one another grow and change also without being dictators as to what should happen. I, I need a we I need a kinder, gentler black nation. I need a kinder, gentler United Nation. I need a kinder, gentler United States. What what I want to ask is, no matter how you feel about Kamala Harris personally, 
how much worse do you think it could get if she's in office? Well, we know what's in office now. Let That's me my point. That to come. Yes, and that's That's my point. How much worse can it get with an African American woman in office? I don't care what kind of decisions we have to make once she's there. Right. But I but, but I've had the experience of her not being there, and this is and we're living it. This is not good. This is really not good. Right. I'm very I'm, I'm very con- concerned about our nation and how we're going to move forward. Upcoming projects. Let me let, let me ask you about that. Yeah, you got stuff uh-huh. with you. The second season. Um, you got your spiritual uh, wellness. You got the nourishment. You got uh, so much going on. You got a boyfriend. Well, is there a significant other? Do you have time for anything like that? I do. You know what? I have time, but I'm learning. I may need to make more time, and I want that. I want yeah. that. I'm finally at a place where I can say I want the partnership. I want the companionship. Um, I'm blessed with doing so many things um, and all this travel, this global travel, the global initiatives. You know, I really want a partner now. I'm tired of just being AJ Johnson on my own. You know, I, I want a partner um, to share all this with and to build with, not just my dreams and visions, but his as well. Um, so I'm, I'm waiting to see what God has. I'm not, I'm not looking on my own. I'm waiting for it to be delivered because Lord knows I don't look on my own before and it didn't work. <laughs> I know. I know. Jamie. Well, AJ, AJ, you know I was married 46 years, right? I know. <laughs> Girl, that was the sweetest, most brilliant man. I mean, black men, I'm just in love with them. I mean, I, I know God loves me because he sent me that black man. And he listened to what you said. He sent you that black man. Yeah. See, that's what happens in 46 years. Yeah. You understand you were sent. I'm not doing online dating. No, no, I don't believe in it for me. I don't judge other people. Yeah. I don't believe in it for me. Um, I'm waiting for God to send me my partner, my life partner, my equal yoke. But let me for, no, no, let me just say this because you look absolutely amazing. You look like you did 25 years ago. What is that? What's going? On? What is the regiment? Or is no, it just- actually you're actually getting ready to um, experience some anti-aging products that really? I'm not, yes and a lot of my experimenting with herbs and vitamins from Africa um, is kind of pushing this forward for me because like I said you know I buy products and it says from Africa this particular nut you know shea butter from Africa but now 20 25 years later after consistently using certain products I'm like oh okay so it's the consistency and the true naturalness of what comes from the earth the, the real earth, mother earth, which is Africa. So I'm creating a lot of line of products. Um, the the pandemic stalled me a little bit. I, none of us saw this six month thing coming. It's gonna be longer. So I don't know exactly when we're gonna push forward with the product line, but it's definitely coming. Um, it's it's no stress. Are it's, you housebound right now? Are you housebound in everything you do? Or you go out and you are? What? I don't, I, well, here's the thing. I'm trying to protect myself and clients because I have a few clients that have um, not only just fitness clients, but lifestyle clients that have high blood pressure, diabetes, asthma. And so I'm very careful yes. about the state as I deal with them. Um, I still do a lot of work on Zoom just to protect them. Mm-hmm. Um, I go to the grocery store while I'm in LA. LA kind of scares me. So in the beginning of the pandemic, I actually relocated to St. Thomas for two months. Is that where you are now? Or are you back in no, LA? I'm in LA now. But I was in St. Thomas for May and June. Okay. I came back when LA first opened. Then when they closed down again, because people weren't respond- respecting it, at that time, St. Thomas closed as well. And I took off to Cabo. I was like, <laughs> get me out of here. Listen, <laughs> and, and, and everybody laughs because I was doing that because I couldn't get into Ghana. Oh, you couldn't get into Ghana. I in Africa because the borders were closed. So well, now was- you're in LA, right? You're in LA? I'm in LA. Okay, right now. Okay. Yeah, I'm in LA. Let me ask you about, um, we talked about so much, but I wanted to ask you about the movie, uh, Baby Boy. We lost John Singleton a few years ago and you were working. Last year. One year ago, last year. God, I feel, feel like it's been years. No, it was just last year, last February. Was it right? just last year? Yeah, we just lost John a year ago. Lost. And what are you missing the most about him? And now we lost Chadwick. Okay, Bozeman. Did you meet him? I knew Chadwick. Um, yes. Um, I'm still I'm still processing 
losing Chadwick. Um, I'm still, I'm in a, I'm an emotional place about it. Uh, I'm trying to see, you know, spiritually what it means for us to have lost him so young. Um, I, I've never had a, had a loss where I grieve, but am inspired at the same time. Mm. And so I go from tears and, and sadness to motivated, inspired, like literally in seconds. I feel myself grieve, but yet get inspired, sad, but yet motivated. Like, you know, so I'm, I'm going through the process and I feel like Chadwick earned that from all of us, right? The way that he lived. What as was well. the experience yeah. with him? Did you, were you in the movie or? No, no, believe you... it or not, our connection was Africa. He was watching me go to Africa and I ran into him at one of the local LA malls and he was like, sis, I'm watching you like, you know, queen mother, like what is going on? Like you and I, and I said, listen, you started it with this Wakanda mess. You showed me what Wakanda was, and then I went to Ghana and saw it was real, yeah. and I, yeah, I can't get enough. Yeah. So isn't that interesting that our connection was Africa and our African ancestry? It wasn't the industry, it wasn't movies, it was Africa. And him just saying, I love the spiritual shift I see in you, I love the growth I see in you, and that's what I got to know in him. I mean, I, we only talked once or twice, but uh, you know, in those conversations, it was short but deep. And so we connected, you know, I'm a believer when your souls connect, like we talked about you and I, you know, you don't have to see each other all the time when it's a soul to soul connection. And so- um, How's the movie industry changed from the time you started until now, you know? Ooh, how much time do we have? Lord. How much? <laughs> had to be well, clean. you know, it's, it's, it's really, really something I'm learning real time because doing this movie, Holiday Heartbreak, it was my first feature where I got a chance to see that, you know, the industry is now hiring a lot of social media influencers as actors, as opposed to actors. Uh -huh. And so, you know, they, they get acting coaches, they get a lot more patience on set because, you know, the production understands that they've got these large followings and the production wants to hopefully transfer the followings into seats in the theater. So they're a lot more patient with the acting talent that these people may not have yet. Mm -hmm. And that's new for me. So I actually dove in to the new and said, how can I help? Like, let me help coach on set. Let me help support them on set. Um, because it's new doesn't mean it's, it's, it's bad. It just means it's new. And I think that's one of the biggest lessons for me personally. I also feel like um, there used to be big projects, small projects, um, network TV versus cable TV. You know, I feel like I'm talking, you know, there used to be independent film versus studio film. Now it's just, are you working? Okay, that's just as long as you get to work. As long as you're working, as long as you're doing something, then there you go. Because so what you, everybody- what you, what you working on? What is Holiday Heartbreak? Tell us about that. And you were in Chassis, um, um, Chassis a movie. That's, ho that's Holiday yeah. Heartbreak. That's Mega oh. Mike. Yes, Tressa Smallwood. Love her as producer, obsessed with her as my new sister. Um, I'm, I look forward to doing more, not only on camera work, but producing with them. Um, Tressa made me a producer on Holiday Heartbreak. And I think, I'm, I'm praying it's gonna be a breath of fresh air this Christmas, after the year we've had. It's a comedy starring myself, uh, comedian Michael Collier, who's amazing. I uh, love him. Jane, who's amazing. Lisa Ray McCoy is in it. Um, Lisa Ray, okay. And, Yes, yeah, so so we had fun. We had fun creating a new holiday project. So we'll see what happens. I was in her last movie, you know. You she, are? Girl, she had me as a blind woman. Not blind. <laughs> with a uh, with a newspaper when I can't read and I had a cane and I had to to, you know, I had to talk to the little girl with my ear because I can't see her and I got to touch her and everything. I said, Tressa, good thing that it was that short. But anyway, she's always trying to put me in the movies. This is a, a, this is a family. Tressa's family is amazing because the husbands are the ones who put up all the money for their movies, for any projects that these women do. Her, her girl, her uh, cousin, uh, Sister Tam, sister Tamla, Tam wardrobe. Her husband uh, Tam sells clothes, right? Yeah. Her husband gets his house, rebuilds the house downstairs, makes it into a store, 
for her. So if you have, to, have, did you see it? Did you get yeah. a check? Went shopping. Damn near split my whole check in the boutique. <laughs> I gave the family money right back. I was like, this is how y'all get us. And then wait a minute. So then uh, th then you have the husband who, uh, Tressa's husband, who is in trucking. So the, the men are there. Uh, uh, then you have the other uh, cousin. Her her husband is the accountant, and they, I mean they are amazing. This family is amazing. You know? I enjoy. Listen, you're so right. I I enjoyed stepping out of L.A. and the levels of this industry. You're asking what's different. The levels of this industry that don't operate in the family dynamic like that. That was new for me. So first of all, go to D.C. and Maryland, see this family creating all this amazing content as a family unit. And I was like, this is awesome that this family is, is diving in and creating this generational wealth yeah. as well as amazing content, you know, African-American content. So I love everything they're doing. Mega Mind, I'm a fan. Um, the name you know, of the movie? Holiday Heartbreak. That's Holiday Heartbreak. So they make sure that uh, they... I just want them to go see that movie. But in the meantime, you have appeared on, oh my God, A Different World, Fresh Prince, In the Heat of the Night, Amen, Touched by an Angel, Chicago Hope, The Jamie Foxx Show, Siren School, Days, House Party Society, The Inkwell, and of course, Baby Boy. Now, this is very complicated. This, this wine here, this wine was a gift from a client, okay? This, he gave me this when we closed this deal. This is... Don't. All right, baby girl, come on, baby girl. We gonna start this again now? Come on now. I am admitting it to you. That, that wine was a gift. Remember, it's just you and I, baby. Just you and I. Forget everybody. Admit Forget it. everybody else. Admit it. I need to hear you say it. Hey, Tell the truth. It's just you. Be a man. I, I am a man, okay? And I'm a... Get out. Get out. Heather Knight, come on. Get out. Baby boy, out of all of that, which one are you the most proud of? And I miss my John Singleton. You asked me earlier, what did I miss most with John? And I gotta be honest, I miss our random, non-industry, friends for 30 years conversations. John would call me and say, chocolate, you call me chocolate, hot chocolate. What are you doing? <laughs> That's what he called me, hot chocolate. Hot chocolate, what are you doing right now? Where are you? Are you in LA? Yes, I'm in LA. What are you doing? Meet me at the boat. I'll be there in an hour. What boat? He had a boat. He, loved he had a boat. Okay. Sail. And I would drive down to Marina Del Rey where he docked his boat. And sometimes we wouldn't even sail. We would just sit on the boat and drink wine and talk and laugh and share and create. Sometimes we sail. Most of the time we wouldn't. Mm -hmm. But there was just something about the, the energy of us on the boat um, where I just, that's what I miss. I miss, I miss us strategizing as friends. I miss his, um, John was a friend that although we were in industry, John and I were friends for years before I did Baby Boy. John and I met, he was the student that came on the set of House Party. And oh. so we, met, we oh. met way back then. So John was a safety net for me. You know, John was a place where I could be vulnerable and, um, and truthful and honest and, and there was no judgment. And so I miss having that degree of a friend in the industry and in LA, but that I knew that I could be safe with. I miss that the most. So were you surprised when he passed? I mean, he was so young. Um, I knew from our friendship that there were some health issues. Yeah. Uh, of course, I stayed in his ass myself about his health. Yeah, uh, our men don't take care of themselves. So, yeah. so I was not, 
I wasn't shocked. I was surprised because I did not know that he was not fixing a lot of the things that we talked about for better health needed to get fixed. And what that did, honestly, it made me dive deeper into men's health. And so, and okay, this is very important because our, our men don't take care of themselves. Okay. No. And, and part of what the AJ Zone was doing before pandemic, and hopefully we'll get back to, is your know, better health retreats. And now that we've been through a pandemic, I'm adding more mental health components to my retreats. And I'm going to do one just for men. You know, I'm gathering my, my male counterparts in healthy living and fitness, and I want to do retreats for men. I want all my sisters to send their husbands, to send their boyfriends you know, to these retreats because they need support, the mental support, the spiritual support, the better health nutrition support. They don't need the nagging from the wife. They need to understand what better means. And so I'm. that's when you say new projects, that's the kind of new stuff that I'm working on creating. I also feel like now, how new can we, we don't know what's happening tomorrow. You know, we're right. living a different day and different time. Mm -hmm. And I think everything that's happening right now is trial and error. We don't know if this new COVID protocol is going to be great on set and with projects. You know, we don't know if it's going to cost the production more money than it's worth than to just wait and see. You know, we're we're trying, we're trial and error, everything right now. Right? Isn't that crazy? I know, I know, but I, I like the idea that we got we have to concentrate on our men. This is very important. Okay, I'm glad that you even talk, mentioned that because oh, yeah. they're the ones that are pushed aside. It's, you know, woman power and all that. We always say, you know, woman power, but shoot, the first thing we want is to have a man to do. A healthy man. A, a healthy, healthy man. A man that's that's working in our power. A right. healthy man that's not intimidated by my paycheck. If it's but big. how do you grow them? You have to grow them. Yeah. And who teaches them? We ha They have to be taught by other men also. Women can only do so much. Yes. We don't know how men are. They have to be taught to be men. They have to be able to have jobs. They have to be able to support. And so we have to be able to talk to our boy babies to help. Don't say you just like your daddy. You ain't ever going to amount to nothing because our men are special. They really they, are. They, they have something that is growing inside of them that sometimes we don't even know. We have so many incredible men. One of one of my my trips, and again, um, I don't know when it's going to happen because who knows with travel and COVID and, and where what we're going through right now. But one of my visions that I'm going to speak of now, so that you can hold me accountable and everybody in here can, I want to do a trip to Ghana for my brothers. I want them to learn and understand the kings they really are, mm -hmm. and how they've been treated and taught here in America is. Is, is still an element of slavery. They should not be handcuffed, which is another version of shackles. Yes. Don't get me started. They should not be handcuffed and beaten. If if you you know if you want to come to a man correctly, man to man, why put him in handcuffs in a back of a police car on the ground and then take his life or beat him? That's such a cowardly move. It's 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 a it's slavery. It's another form of shackles. So I want to take a lot of my brothers to Africa to show them who they really are. Because the men, some of the husbands that have gone with me and friends that have gone with me have been there with me, to watch them cry, to watch them release, to watch them learn, to watch them rise up. I mean, so many of us publicly saw Steve Harvey's journey when he was there in Ghana. And I haven't, I was there, but I didn't see Steve at the time. And I haven't talked to Steve since then. But we watched his experience publicly for him to understand it's a whole different thing than who he thought he was, who he's been taught that he was. So I want to do my part, you know. One day, I'm going to do my part and take a group of my brothers to Ghana. Um, I'm making black men my major. That's it. I love that. We got some work to do, Jamie. We have work to do, and I look forward to it. I don't think there's anything else on earth that's more glorious and wonderful as they are. We poison them, just we poison them once they come here. We got to do better than that. I agree. I agree. So you and I are probably you let let me know when you're gonna when Ghana opens up oh, again. So Ghana, I, Ghana's now open, and I'm telling you now, um, if not before, and we'll talk privately. But I plan to be there if God willing, um, for the new year again. I, I probably okay. spend December to January. Yeah, I have friends over there. I, I, I'll tell you, when I was there, I would go to a nightclub. 
you know, and I it's all oh, good. girl. Now you know me, Jamie. You know, I I end up with no shoes on. Just, honey, I had five different men when they would see me dance. Next thing I know, the next one is that I had five different guys, no lie, asking me out, always to go dancing. And of, of course, uh, I was married at the time, so I couldn't. <laughs> I'm not married now. <laughs> oh my God! I mean, I, and Jay, I I just miss you so much. I need I needed this. I needed you today. And you know, I'm so glad that that you you called for me because I miss you. And you know, this this the state of the world right now makes it easy to not connect. Yeah. And it makes it more special when we do. Yeah. And so know that I love you. I appreciate you. I cherish you. I value you. <laughs> and I can't wait to hold hands and dance in Ghana. Girl. Can you imagine? Let's make that happen, girl. We will wear those men out, honey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I dance four or five hours straight. I don't even have to sit down, okay? Well, well you preach it to the choir. I know. I know. So, you know. Let's go get it. <laughs> Let's go get it. Listen, when I hear the drums, it's over. And let's love on our let's love, love on each other. I just this whole this whole platform, the only reason why I'm coming back is for healing of our nation, the yeah. healing of our men. I want us to be kinder. I want to, us to let them grow up to be who they really are meant to be. I gotta I gotta share that one of the reasons I also feel like this is another assignment for me with our men is because one of the times I was in Ghana, I was blessed to tour Elmina Slave Castle with um, uh, the late John Lewis. And you were with my baby? Yes, yes, Jamie. Listen, you went to the, uh, you went to the Slave Castle? Where with they- Nancy Pelosi, I was in Ghana at the oh same my- time. And um, Nancy Pelosi, and the Black Congress and uh, Black Congress and Caucus and um, and John Lewis was there. That was literally a year ago. I want to say we were there July 30th, and a year ago, 2019, July 30th. And we, I asked him because he cried so hard, and I, I watched him. I and know. My tears, and I, I got up enough nerve to say, um, you know, Mr. Lewis, if you would tell me what makes you cry, mm-hmm. and he said. AJ, I've been through a lot in in fighting for civil rights in Mm -hmm. my lifetime, but it was nothing. All I went through was nothing compared to what our ancestors, you know, um, were put through. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have work to do. We have work to do. And so I just... There's no leaving that kind of experience. I had to take it with me. It's, it's, It's lived in my soul. And I continue to think and ask God, what do I do with it? And so that's what I'm saying. And then to lose him this year as well, I just said, he passed the torch. That small, quick conversation, he passed the torch. And so I got it, it's burning, and I can't wait to move forward. Let me tell you, whenever I would see John Lewis, I don't know if he ever really knew who I was. When I would go up to him, I don't care if it was in the in the airport, I don't care if it was at uh, an event during Black Caucus. I didn't care who was around him. I would go up and I would kiss him all over, all over his face, everywhere, <laughs> under his neck. You probably didn't care who it was. <laughs> was like, it it was he would let me just take it all the essence of him. Yes. I was, I was so greedy whenever I saw him in the airport. I'm telling you, I just, I was devastated when he died. I was just yeah. devastated. I took it hard, I took it hard. And I took it hard because I knew that my time with him, as special as I knew it was then, I knew in his death, it was even more special. And so that's why I'm saying, I'm creating projects, I wanna be a part of projects that are already created that salute and further educate and salute our men. Well, you and I are gonna be a project because that's the only reason I'm here. You I get love that? It. You got yeah. that? Okay. Yeah. I thought that you catch it, girl. I got it. I got it. Put it in my pocket. I'm ready. Thank you for being with us. Every oh my God. Everyone, I want to thank everyone for joining us with me with my age, my AJ Hunter. Okay. Yes. Hope you enjoyed this incredible show with the legendary actress Miss AJ Johnson.
Jamie, I love you, and I can't wait to see more of you. And thank you so much for having me. Mwah. Thank you for being with me. Absolutely.